kids. You came back. Good deal. Well, welcome to the greenhouse. It's uh, late March now. Tomato plants are up. Thai pepper seeds are in. They haven't sprouted yet. And I'm uh, working tonight with my dwarf redwood bonsai forest. I planted this from seed last February. And uh, so I've got this much growth in a year. And it should actually come on up and be about two feet tall by the end of the summer. So I'm pretty excited about it. It's been a lot of fun. I was thinking the other day, my uh, buddy Scott recently had a birthday, and since we've been in high school, it seemed appropriate to drag him into these stories uh, because, you know, after all, he, he was there. So I was thinking about him, and I was thinking about our senior year. Now, our senior year of high school, we were in the same home room. Now, I don't know how things are in your age, but uh, back in our day, we had this first class that we would show up for and they would basically count attendance and give announcements and we would pledge allegiance to the flag and and then we would hear the bell and we'd all go to first period and get on with our day. And we figured out, it only took us 12 years, but we figured out that if you skipped home room then you would be on the absentee roll for the day. And what would happen then, we could skip any class that we wanted to skip through the day and no one would catch us because we would be on the master absentee roll. It's a great plan. The other part of the plan was that I would always write his notes and he would always write my notes and that way our parents signature would always look the same. So even if one of us was actually sick or actually had to go to the dentist or whatever, and our real moms wrote us a note, we would throw those away and we would get each other to write the notes so that we would have consistency with the signatures. It was a great plan, foolproof, and it worked. It really worked for, for a while. And then somehow, and, and to this day, I'm not sure what happened, we got caught. Somehow the word got around that we were skipping class and, and we got caught. And so, as I said, at homeroom, they would make these announcements and we were sitting there and the announcement came over and it was uh, Mark and Scott uh, need to go to Mr. Nichols' office. Now Mr. Nichols was the vice principal. He was about six foot four. He was built like a gorilla and was, you know, known to be, I don't know, one of the meanest people in the school. Now probably in real life he was a sweet guy, but for us he was big and tall and intimidating and was known to, you know, be the rule maker. And uh, so, of course, uh, Scott and I got up and left homeroom and went to the music facility, which is where we lived on campus, uh, hanging out in the choral room. We did not go to Mr. Nichols' office. The next day, announcement time, Mark, Scott, report to Mr. Nichols' office. We got up, walked out of homeroom, and went to the music facility where Richie was our choral director and for God knows why he would let us just hang out down there and skip class and go to Dairy Queen for lunch and do all kind of crazy things that he probably could have gotten fired for but he loved us and he allowed us just to kind of do whatever we wanted to do as long as we were in his class and sang well everything was great this went on for two or three days uh, they would call us we would get up we would leave we would go to the choral room and hang out Finally, Mr. Nichols sent his page, you know, some 10th grade lackey came, knocked on the door and decided to escort us to Mr. Nichols' office where we went in and he presented us with the evidence of our sin that we had been skipping class. And again, I, I don't know how we got caught, maybe Scott can remind me, but all I know is he said and told us, you know, how horrible we were and we must be punished. So we must be punished for this terrible transgression of skipping class. And he gave us two options. The first option was you could get it over with, you could take three licks from the paddle. That is, you could reach over, bend over and grab the arms of a chair and allow this gorilla of a man to wallop you on the butt three times with a wooden stick. Or you could opt for three days of detention hall, which meant that you went down to Backland Road with the rest of the hippies and you picked up cigarette butts off of the side of the road and whatever else they did, I don't know, you killed an hour after school. Well, Scott, being ever the pragmatic person, decided that he was just going to get it over with and that way his parents wouldn't know and he would just take the beating. And me, being me, decided that I would... Um, for the 
detention home. So uh, I was excused, you know, I was put on the list, three days detention hall, and then I stepped out in the hall and uh, proceeded to listen to my very dear friend uh, get beaten by a gorilla. And uh, I'll never forget, he came out, you know, of uh, Mr. Nichols' office, his uh, face was a little red, and he was limping a little bit, and you know, but he had this big smile on his face, and he laughed at me, he goes, at least mine's done. You got three hours of detention hall to serve, and that's going to be a whole lot worse than what I just went through. And I just laughed at him and said, I have uh, no intention of ever going to detention hall. And uh, the real truth is, uh, I never did. Now the rule was, see the rule was that if you owed them detention hall, that they would not let you walk and you wouldn't get your diploma until you had paid the penalty for this terrible transgression you have committed. Uh, and I never, I never went, not once, not for a second did I go pick up cigarette butts off of the side of the road with the rest of the dopers. And uh, when the time finally came for me to graduate, um, nothing was ever said. I still think they probably were just so glad that I was leaving that they weren't going to do anything to prolong my uh, continued uh, presence at McEachern High School. So um, that's the moral of the story. You can get away with it, but you gotta, you know, be brave. Anyway, that's the real story, friends. It really happened. And Scott, you know I love you. There are other stories I could tell, and I'm not going to, so you can tell your kids, calm down. You know, I wouldn't even think about bringing up the uh, Wendy's pickle bucket full of beer that we had in the car during graduation uh, rehearsal or anything like that. There's, there's no need to bring anything like that up. I wouldn't mention it. Anyway, I've got to get back to my plans. I'm glad you came to the greenhouse. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we will definitely, definitely do this again. Until then, salute.